Hey guys, Clem from Outback Mini Models. This is the second part of the Composi Mold uh, video that I'm making at the moment. Um, in this part, we're going to look at how to actually use this stuff. Um, it's man, this is my first time. This is going to be I'm going to wing this. I've just had a bit of a read on the instructions. I have been watching um, the some of the videos that are posted up on the Composi Mold uh, Facebook page. If you do want to have a look, I will put the link down there. Um, it's there's a lot of there's a couple of videos on there that are guys are uh, casting Lego figures. There's actually another one um, where there's a, a bloke casting um, action figures, but not really guys posting videos or people posting videos on for our hobby um, modeling for sake. A um, lot of ladies posting, you know, making candles and things like that. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of different variants of how to use this product, but at the end of the day, it's going to be fairly similar. So you you are going to need a, um, a microwave-proof container. Now, I've got a 500ml container here. It is a microwave-safe one, um, so make sure it is microwave-safe. Um, otherwise, yeah, it, you're going to heat it up, and it's just going to go, bleh, and it's just going to melt, and you're going to waste all this the composite mold. So, um what we're going to do is, is I'm not going to use, because we do have a big chunk of it here, um, I'll just leave it in the background, um, I'm going to actually tilt it up and then have a small mould because I, um, yeah, I don't need to fill all this up, okay, so it's just going to be overkill what I'm, what I'm going to um, do. And then what we're going to do, and and when you are casting things, make sure it's, it is for only like, home use, private use, like, yeah, you don't want to go selling it and making money off because you will get in trouble for it, but if you do just want to use it for your own personal use and for your own personal collections, you know, I think that's perfectly fine. I just want to put that out there. Um, so these are some resin heads that I've got, some German 1 to 35 resin heads. If I can get this in closely, if it does want to focus, okay, because I, I've already used one on one of my builds and, yeah, I just don't want to, these are a bit, very hard to get where I where I live, so um, yeah. Hopefully the um, the casting resin will pick up the detail. Okay, so you've just got a few few heads here, and I and I'm going to leave the casting blocks left on here, so that way when I do come time to cut them off, you know, I can just that's going to act as a base on here as well. So all right, so. First of all, we're going to need to clean the container just to make sure. I've got a uh, clean paper towel. Um, just mind the, the, the light on the table. That's from the outside window. I just have a window just on the other side of that monitor there um, behind you. So, yeah. So, just going to grab some isopropyl alcohol because it does evaporate. Okay, so we're just going to spray it in this container and give it a quick wipe just to make sure there's any, like, any grease or dust that is in here um, is removed. All right. All right. Okay. And now I'm going to have to find a way to um, stick these things down. So. Um, what I might do is, um, 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 I'm gonna try. So what you want to do, if I can bring this camera down, down here, it's not gonna work now because I've got it up an angle. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna put the you can probably see it through the container here, so you can just make out through the container. Um, like all we're doing, I'll do it outside here. So all we're doing is we're just going to stand these um, these heads upside down because you know if I put them up that way, there's going to be air bubbles trapped underneath the brim of the hat and under the helmets. So that way, if I when I do pour it this way, the air bubbles aren't going to be there, and I'm going to space them out a bit too because I. Okay, so we're going to do it something roughly like that. And these squares here are 10 mils apart, so that's, that's going to give you a rough idea. So you want about 15, 15, 20 mils apart. It's not going to hurt it, okay? 
Alright, so I'm going to space them out roughly like that inside the container. So I'm going to work out how to do this. So just bear with me and we'll come back to once I've sorted it out. Um, um, fuck. How do we do this? I'm going to set some fucking real quick. Play tag, where am I? Give me those open. Okay, so what I've come up with is got some blue tack. Okay, so it shouldn't affect it because this will be the top of the mold, and hopefully the blue tack sticks to the resin. So the idea is we're just going to stick it down like so in the bottom of the container. Okay, and this is pretty blurry. I do apologize. So I'm going to try and fix this up, please. Okay, so we're going to just stick them down like so. So what we're going to do is, and I'm going to be very careful because because these already are resin parts. Um, these, you know, they're going to snap off quite clearly. That's that's what they're designed for. So on the helmet, you can snap them off and see they're quite thin down the bottom there. So a bit of extra care is going to have to be taken when you are handling these things, guys. Okay. So, and I want to get this on now because I don't want the um, the the um, what do you call it the mold release when it does go on the blue tack's not going to stick down. So I've got to carefully when I do apply the mold release is to um, carefully, and then what I'm what. What I might actually do is I might actually have to apply this by by paintbrush. So I've got a just an old old paintbrush here, okay. And then we've got the um, mold release here. And the beauty of this is we don't need to make a your typical um, block, yeah, uh, your your um, your walls, your, your traditional walls when you're making a mold. You can if you want to. That's entirely up to you. But just for this one, I'm going to, and just for good measures, 
I'm going to give it a shake and that's the applicator you get with it but I think it's going to be a bit too big so I'm only um, casting a couple of heads here so I'm going to give it a quick shake all right and what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully grab each head I'm going to make sure if I can grab it um, yeah just trying to work out if I can grab it and then put them in that way should be able to fingers crossed this works so so dip it in there and then I'm just going to brush on the mold release oops okay this is going to be trickier than what I thought but it's my first time doing it so just bear with me guys so what I might actually do is what I might do is I might just get all the blue tack down in first that might be easier I think So this is my actually my first time trying to cast resin. So so we're going to learn all the mistakes together. Okay, so that's how I've got it set up in there. And then just inspect the part that you've just poured uh, with mold release on it. Just double check it and press it down like that. So that should hold like so. And then. I might take these gloves off. It's kind of a bit awkward. Alright, so I'm just going to put this mold release on the back here so I don't knock it over the bench. And just dip some more in there. So I might actually keep this brush on the side. I might actually scratch, scratch it in there and just write down mold release on the side so I don't contaminate with anything else. I don't really use this brush to begin with. It's, um, it's just one of those cheap brushes I've I've had for many years that I bought from the dollar store. I think it was going to be for um, basing and things like that, but I don't really use this brush. So, you know, and then just get your paper towel and then try to wipe off. Really, don't be too excessive with it. You don't want it dripping off this resin part. Okay. So, press the next bit in there, and just carefully press them in, you don't want them snap. And then what I might do, once these are in, I might just give them another quick brush over. Okay, so, and just make sure you get around all up here as well. Just with the paper towel that we had with the isopropyl isopropyl paper, so it's no worried about contaminating the brush. Okay, so make sure you get it all in, especially in here under the brim, and get it in the face as well. With the last one, just gonna brush him on like so. make sure that you don't get any excessive pooling especially under here like under the brim around the face yeah because it's going to pull obviously with gravity all right and just double check and then just make sure just give it a quick dip all right and then what we're going to do is going to press this one in here as well carefully 
I don't want to snap these off. Now, so when we get our molds, hopefully, now that's going to be tricky because oh, we're going to be able to tear these apart anyway. So, but what I'm concerned about is when I do pour the resin. Actually, what I might do, I might change it. I might turn them upside down because when I am pouring. When I'm pouring the spouts, that's going to be because it's going to be upside down. The um, just making sure that it's okay because I normally chop chop the next down anyway. These necks are normally too long, so I'm just going to reform the blue tack in here. Oops. Maybe this is going to be. Trickier than what I thought. Because the mold release now doesn't want to stick. Well, it's definitely doing what it's meant to do. Let's double check. Let's put it all down there, like so. This one's going to be tricky because this bike's pretty much got no neck, but it's a learning curve. So, actually, I might just leave it that way, and that way I can show you what happens. So, I'll, I'll do two like that, and then two the other way, and that way we can have a look um, what happens when you turn them upside down. Because I'm going to learn for myself, so I want to teach myself at the same time. So, and then what you're supposed to do is um, it's supposed to get some mold release on this little on the applicator here. Alright, so I'm just going to make just get off any excess. And I'm just going to go, you don't have to go all the way up because I'm not going to, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to fill this container all the way to the top. Okay, put that halfway. So it's probably going to be. So looking at it, I'm probably going to need about 300, 300 mils worth in here. So it's pretty much just on a third of a container, just a bit over, a bit, a bit less actually. All right, so and then get our brush and then just. In between here, try not to touch the blue tack because what's going to happen as soon as it touches the blue tack, these heads or the, the masters here are just going to fall over. Alright, so put the lid back on the mold release. I'm going to tilt the camera back up and then I'm going to get some of this bubble buster. Once again, it does say shake well before use. So I've already given it a good shake, but before you um, actually shake it, you will see there's a lot of sediment sitting down the bottom, so you want to give it a really good shake. And then you want to okay, just give it a spray in there. Excess that pulls down the bottom. I'm just going to tip it out. Okay. All right, and we're just going to leave that there. And put the cap back on on our bubble buster. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to. Uh, this will probably disappear. So. Um, I really don't know. Okay, so we're going to heat this up. And I'm going to a big stick.
Alright, so you're going to have to check. And they state very importantly on the side of this packaging here, on the top here, is um, yeah, it's going to vary, okay, estimated. These aren't exact times, so you are just going to have to keep an eye on it, on the, um, um, keep an eye on your composite mod when you are heating it up. And so we're going to quickly run through it. It says, pour the melting posi mold over the original part that has been secured to the bottom of a heat safe dish. Okay, so which we've already done. And get rid of some more of this, um, this bubble buster. Okay. And uh, let composite mold solidify by cooling back to its flexible and rubbery consistency, which is there. Okay. Um, remove the original part from the mold and pour or press in your casting material. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're just going to heat it up now. And then, because we are going to heat up the um, full container, so we get, well, it's 300, no, is it, uh, 40 ounce, which is the full container, which is, we're not going to need to, but um, it's, it's going to be roughly anything from two to four minutes stirring every 45 seconds so depending on the wattage of your microwave your times are going to vary so um, I'm going to be back in a minute and I am going to bring this back when I'm time to stir it and I'll show you what we're doing so okay so loosely put the um, sticker on there and we'll be back Alright, so this is the first 45 seconds that we've um, that we've come to. So you can see that the outside's starting to melt, but the the center is um, very still at a very solid stage. But if you do get any spills, guys, like and it does accidentally drip on your bench or whatever, don't stress. I mean, you can just pick that off and chuck it back in, or put in a little another container as a spare, and you can reuse it. So anything that um, comes away, you can reuse it. So, we're just going to give it a quick stir on the outside, and we're going to definitely need some more, guys. So, so I'm just going to throw it on a piece of glass there, and then we'll come back. Okay, so while we're waiting for um, while we're waiting for it to go off again, you can see just those 45. Like so I've only just put it back in. You see how quick that this sets? Like it's um, it's pretty gooey already, so very tacky. And then I'm just gonna leave that there just to show you what I mean. Um, you know, you can always pick it off later on, use it again. So we're just gonna screed the rest of this off and just um. 
Okay, this is a bit of plastic on my set of scales here, so this will just rub off. Sure enough, it does. Okay, so better come back. Alright, so okay, you see that it's still. Hang on, I'm gonna jack this camera up for you guys. You can definitely see that the center is it's starting to get soft now and starting to sink but you know what you're looking at it's it's pretty much like honey okay that's what it looks like when it's starting to melt um, you know you don't want to get too many I guess you don't want too many air bubbles in this thing either so you got to be very careful but you know it's um, you can't really stir it really at the moment Maybe if we had a smaller amount of it, but I'm just trying to melt it all up to begin with. So, I'm just going to screed all this off. Alright, back in the microwave. Probably need another two or three hits, so I'm just going to stand over here and just get it ready. Alright guys, so what I've actually done, is I've decanted some of the um, Composi Mold uh, original out of the main tub and I've actually put it in a um, microwave safe container just to make life easier because it was, they had a big ball down the bottom that just wouldn't melt and, I didn't, and this was starting to get a bit too hot so, um, so I thought just decant some of it, now you can see it is very very viscous okay it's very very thin and just do be careful because it is quite warm so if you do any small children around or animals or things like that just keep them clear from this because you don't you definitely don't want this stuff getting on your child's skin or even your own skin guys that's just a bit of a warning there so I've got some of my fingers before and it is quite warm like it's not you can see I just drilled a bit on my hands there but once it sets, you know, I can just peel it off. So, all right. So, fingers crossed. Hopefully, the blue tack doesn't melt down the bottom. All right. So, this is quite. I wish I had a thermometer here to show you. It is quite warm. So, I mean, okay. So, we should be right to go now. I'm just going to check if there's any strange poolings in any gaps, and there isn't. Okay. So, what we're going to do is going to get the container and I'm just going to stick my paintbrush here down the bottom and we're just going to pour pour it in there just keep going Keep going, and we're just going to take it probably up to the 300 350 mil mark. That's if we've got enough. Or I may, I may as well just keep going, pour it all in there. Why not? All right, so and keeping in mind this stuff is reusable so once this stuff sets don't throw this container away you, you, you can peel um, the mold agent off this and reuse it okay so I mean it's the beauty of this stuff it's not like using traditional two-part mold molding um, agents there you know you just got to scrape it all out and throw the container away so let all this dry and cool down. Alright, so let me quickly clean my hands here. So 
your hands do become very sticky uh, but that will just come off later on now what we're going to do now I'm just going to give it a quick tap because I don't want to get if there are any air bubbles um, you can see you can see the guys down the bottom there submerged having a nice little swim all right so we're just going to let this cool down all right I don't know how long it's going to take so it's going to take a little while for the temperature to cool down and for this mold to actually go back to the original um, ballistics gel consistency so we're, I'm going to cut it here I'm going to let it cool down and when it does cool down um, we'll come back and have a look at the, um, the mold itself and the removal and all the rest of it okay so I'll see you in the next bit see you guys hey guys we're back so we've given this maybe I reckon we're talking about six six hours of cure and then we've had a bit of a boo-boo here so you can see that one of the heads have actually floating up off the bottom so we're left with three um, so yeah might even yeah so we've got three down there and there's the one with the um, officer's cap on that actually floated up but so we've got two that are upside down and one so we're, we're going to just basically I'm trying to experiment what will work when I do come to pour more so I mean it's just a rough idea how to use it guys it's, all right. so I put the lid on here just to keep the dust over during the curing and um, you know, fold this up in half so because I don't want the um, mold release all over my bench so what we're going to do you can see it now like it's a very going back to a ballistics gel type um, press and it bounces back okay so what we're going to do is, uh, before I go on any further too I'm going to show what I was talking about earlier on in the video okay so I mean this stuff here that over there you should be able to if it wants to behave um, where is it yeah, you just rub it back this should just peel back like so. Alright. And all you want to do with this is because there isn't any mold release or anything on this in this container. So what you do is you get your pop the camera up a bit. Alright. So what you want to do is you pop the lid. Okay, this is all set from this morning as well. Okay, so you're gonna have you know, all these little bits and things floating around. And it makes it a bit hard with gloves on as well because it just sticks even more. Right. So you just stick it back in there. Ah, oh, hang on, I'll get it. Alright, so take one of these gloves off. Peel it back. See, it's just it's just like a rubber. It's not a um, it's not liquid form anymore. It's actually set, cooled down. All right. So I'll be keeping this container as well, close by. Let's see. Bring it back here further so you can see what I'm doing. Alright, so I'm just peeling it back. Use your finger to rub it. And it's pretty easy. Okay. And this will go back into making your next mold, okay? Yeah, so that's pretty much it guys. So yeah, anything you got left in there doesn't really matter. The next time you heat up this heat it up it's gonna melt again so alright so we'll just put that up there out of the way. Put the lid back on here so we keep all the gunk out of it. And I'm going to put the glove back on. Okay. So 
so back to the mold all right so you want to carefully you don't have to be really careful you can be sort of kind of rough with it all right And it just comes in like so. And you can see all the mold release that comes out from the mold. This is why I've got the piece of paper down. Alright, so now I'm going to take my gloves off. That was probably the messiest part of it. And I'm going to get a. Just got a coffee with me as well. Okay, so I'm just going to grab my Citadel tool because it's not very sharp. And the first thing you know, because we have got blue tack in here. Alright, so. And hopefully the blue tack will come away quite easily. Now I want to try and pick this blue tack out before I um, try to take the actual resin heads out. Alright, so that's one lot of blue tack out. This one here, because it was a mishap, um, what we can do is if I can find it, so just get my hobby knife, and because this is actually sunk in there, so and I'm just going to toss that bit of piece away, all right. Because I do not want that to contaminate the lot next time I mix it through. Alright, so that's pretty much it there. So. I mean the um, the mold release too also helps um, that the blue tack doesn't stick onto the um, the composite mold helps as well. Right, and then down to the last one, I'm just gonna this one comes out quite easily, which is good. And then we can just ditch this blue tack. No longer need this. <laughs> Alright, so now what we can do here. Alright. So you can see the heads that are inside there, okay. So I'm just gonna try and get this last bit of um blue tack out. Might need the um, tweezers. Alright, so she's out. And um just gonna hobby knife and just scrape it back a little bit. Alright, so I'm gonna grab a pair of tweezers or pliers and carefully hopefully that'll just pop out. Okay, there's one. Now you want to carefully pull it out and try not to try not to damage the um 
the resin parts as well as the mold. You just don't just yank it out. Yeah, I don't think you could do this with a, with a traditional um, mold. Okay, so we just yank them out. And if you can see inside there, you can see the the heads um, are actually really, really nice in there, guys. There's probably, if there are any bubbles that are left in there, I mean, you know, if you're not happy with it, you can always recast the mold and readjust the, the way that the, the uh, masters go in there. And I'll also get this guy out before I, because I probably will forget. So what we'll do is just slice it down the side here. I'll use the Citadel tool because it's not so sharp. All right, so all right, so we're just going to dig him out. You can see how easily it comes out. You know, you're not getting mass amounts of like you know you don't even get the called posi mold stuck to it. So it comes out very very easy, guys. And good luck trying to do that with a um, the old traditional way. Okay, so that sh still should have mold release in it. All right, so so what we're going to do now is we're going to get our scales. Okay, and I'm just going to give us a quick wipe down. And the way I normally clean down my things um, is I normally just grab some isopropanol alcohol. Don't use Windex, especially on acrylic, which will eat into it. Um, I just generally get a bit of isopropyl alcohol, spray it on. Alright, so that's nice and clean. Alright, so we're going to get our container, and we're not going to need much. You imagine, no, we're only pouring three heads. So um, we're going to get our. That's stuck to there. Yeah, so we don't need the bubble buster now. It's now that we've the bubble bust is only for when you use the um when you're casting or when you're you know, mold, making copies of the but we actually got the master in when you're copying the master. So we're just going to give it a quick shake, not too much because we don't want bubbles in there. All right, so we're going to turn the scales on, and this is a one to one mic one to one ratio. So, so this is zeroed off. So, what's this one? This is A. Um, so, I'm just going to get a um, barbecue stick. Get the mold out of the way. I'll get the scales in shot. See, it's tamper proof um, seals on them, so you know that when you get them, there's, they haven't been contaminated with anything. I'm just going to open it halfway.
roughly. roughly 50-50 because I don't think my scales will register at such a light weight so it's going to be by eye roughly one to one so we're just going to give this a stir now this is gonna, we're going to have so much left over so I wish I had more moulds to um, pour so they're talking about it's got a 45 minute pot life okay so give it a really good stir guys and which I don't have with me which is a real shame um we might have some in here. yep we're gonna use this I'll just wipe it back later on. Alright, so I've just got a um, arts and crafts or clay sculpting tool, which I can just wipe back. I don't use it for anything else. So, just give it a really good stir, guys. Get the scales out of the way. Bring this mold back in here. So we're just going to keep stirring. Alright, so. Stirring, stirring, stirring. And it's up to you. You can also transfer this into another container and keep stirring. Um, I've seen a lot of guys do that, but I'm just going to keep stirring. So, what you want to do now is just have a lot of bowls here. So, I'm going to try and tap all these out. Alright, so we've got a few bowls in here. So there's going to be bubbles in here which I'm going to try and get out. Just going to stab it in there. So we've got heaps left, okay. because it is a clear mold you, you can see into it so if you do need to fix it up or anything just poke around in there okay so So still just bust it open a big air pocket so, so you can see the air is coming out I want to stab around in there just to make sure any air bubbles are free and see them coming up
Okay, so I can push them over there. But if you have poured molds before, um, I'll tell you now, I haven't. So, um, you're probably going to have better luck than getting these air bubbles out. Now, if you've got a, um, a vacuum, like a cryovac machine, so you can suck these air bubbles out, uh, that'll help as well. Um, even if you've got a vibrating deck, that also helps. But there are things I'm going to have to invest in later on down the track. Just give it a little bit of a squeeze, you can see, like, you know, just squeeze them. Okay, so you can see the bubbles coming out. Alright, so, I mean, I'm not worried about any of the resin overflow. I mean, we can just clean that up later when we pop the molds out, or pop the pieces out. Okay, I'm not fussed at all. What I, what I am worried about is trying to get these, um, Cavities filled with the casting resin. Okay. This, there you go, that's looking pretty good, that one. Okay, and then, so you can see when I squeeze down, I bring the camera down. Okay. See when I squeeze down the air bubble that's coming up from in there. Okay, we, we won't get rid of those air bubbles. So we're just going to keep squeezing. I mean, I don't think I can get all of them out, but um, you know, I'm going to try and get most of them out. So you see now that you squeeze, no bubbles come out. That's that's good. And this one there's a massive one down here. So you squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it. You can tease it to the top. Okay, pop. And just gently. Pop him out. Okay, so let's just have another squeeze. And there's no bubbles coming back out. I mean, you can keep playing with this and just to get all the bubbles out. But you watch, what you want to do is when you let go, you've got to gently release the mold. If you, if you like, release it too quick, it's going to suck air back into the to the um, cavity, and you have to try and get it out again. Okay, so so what we're going to do now is we're just going to leave it. All right, we're going to let this cure. And um, and that should take about an hour or so. But we'll come back, have a look, and we'll have a look at it. And we may need to leave it overnight. If we do, we'll come back then. I'm just going to check it period. Hey guys, now we're back again. Uh, I've given this 24 hours, so it's it's definitely set so I've had this old little tray where I put all the excess off and the resin's definitely hard okay so I've done the done the check and um, so what we're going to do and I did pour four and as you see in the previous video, um, part of this video I had to pull one of these heads out um, yeah it just floated up to the top so you see that the, the mold's still very 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 flexible um, you know, if, if you guys are pouring two-part um, latex molds, tell me um, if the molds that you guys are pouring are as flexible as this. I'm just curious because I've never poured. I've actually got some up the top there, but I've never actually tried it. Um, so, I mean, yeah, you see how flexible this stuff is, all right? So, and what I also done was, if you've seen in the previous steps of these videos, I did pour some excess um, on the top. Oh, you see, I don't know if you can, can there you go, you can see like the, the small pools here. Okay, so that's just so I've got something to grab onto when I have to pull these out. So we're just going to, I'll get my knife here. Just 
press all that so it lets go and this one's let go so we're just gonna I'll just bring it so you can see it there see I'm gonna bring this camera a little bit you know, I don't have this on autofocus so I'm gonna try and keep this in focus as much as I can for you I'll try not to work too close to the camera or too far away because she's on a set distance otherwise the camera just starts going all weird and stuff so the beauty of this stuff is if, if you think it's a bit tight you can always just flex the mold and open up the cavity a bit more and because it is so flexible there you go okay there's one okay so you see the head see his helmet and okay so it's and so there's one so i'll put him just to the side here and we'll get these other ones out because use a cocktail stick so it's not so sharp and i might better use this mold again and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to rinse wash these um these casts with some soapy water warm soap well, i'm not going to do it hot because i've got a funny feeling because the way how soft this the top bit of the this plastic resin here um it's going to um just melt flex so i'm going to try and keep it sort of slightly warm some soapy water i just want to wash the mold release off and then i'm going to give them a prime Okay, so this one's a bit. I just don't want to snap the um. Okay, come on, Paul. Yeah. See, normally you'd pour. I guess the traditional way is to pour them in two halves. You can pour the two halves out together, but I'm. Um, what they're saying is from what I'm reading about this composite mold because the mold is so flexible it should just pop out because it's just but I don't want to snap these okay what we'll do is I'm just gonna get some um, pliers here and pull come on yep and so far these are bubble free i don't know if you can see that okay they have, have actually have casted quite nicely and then for the last one so you can see that i haven't damaged the molds at all so you can see straight through the side you can see so I can use these again. So what I might actually do later on is cut all the excess off and make these molds a lot smaller. You can see that the um, there's uh, what do you call it? A bit of mold release on there still. So and the last one, I'll just try and get all this excess resin off. It's just nothing. Like I don't even know why I'm keeping it because I can't really use this. So. Alright, so we're just going to try and peel back. Whoops. This last one might be a bit tricky because I didn't pour enough excess to grip onto. So, we're going to have some dramas with this one, I think. Okay. And then what I might do. I'm just gonna stretch the um, mold so it pulls away. Hey, should we just push this one out? I should be able to. Okay, hang on. Should just better push this one out. This one should come out quite easily. Just trying not to break there you go it comes out quite easily and there's a big bubble there but 
that's okay. Alright. I'm just having a quick inspection. That's very soft. What I'm just going to do, I'm just going to get some clippers here and clean it up. And just clip that off as well. And then, get the tweezers here. You can see that's actually um, cast, casted quite well. I'm very happy. Um, you can't see it, but uh, the chin straps, the eyes, the nose, the mouth is quite clean. Um, I guess once I get all the uh, mold release off, it's even going to be even cleaner because it's still very goopy at the moment. Um, there's a lot of detail on the helmet still, off the original, and there's a tiny, tiny. How was it? I wouldn't really call it flash. Maybe, is it? Yeah, it's probably just by where a bubble was, maybe. But, um, yeah, you can see it. I don't know if you can see it on the side. See how it's a, just a bit bit of a chunky bit hanging outside there? That'll get cleaned up. So once I get all these washed down and... Um, so once I get all these washed down, I'll put some wash into there and we'll see what details we get out of this. But, um, yeah, so we'll see you probably in the final part of this tutorial. And then once I've had all that done, I actually might take some photos um, of these now. And then um, we'll have a look. And I'll put all these photos up at the end of the video so you can actually get a better look. Because this camera ain't going to pick it up, okay? So I, don't, I just don't want you straining your eyes and going all squinty on me. And um, get these washed. I'll take some more photos, and then you know, we'll get the end of the video. So, stay tuned for that. So, we'll see you in the next bit, probably in the final part of this video, guys. Okay, guys, so this is the final part to the tutorial. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, what I've done is I've, I've put the, the um, casts on these alligator clip painting sticks that I've made up. And um, yeah, so and what I've done is just to show you guys the details because I tried taking photos and yeah, just yeah, didn't really work. But um, I have uh, sorted out a new uh, program now to um, upload and edit all my my um, videos, and it's so much quicker. So yeah, new program, so it's going to make this a lot easier. So hopefully from now on. I'm going back to using my JVC camcorder, not that nasty webcam I was using. So if you did did complain about my old blurry videos, that's probably why I was just all time convenience. Used to take ages to edit. So I've got the um, Tamiya panel accent uh, panel line color, the dark brown. I only just picked this up on the weekend. That's just gone past down at uh, Brisbane there. So we got that, and then what we've done, or what I've done, is I've given it a fairly, it's had a few hours of dry now, so what I've done is actually given a few, or a couple of heavy coats, like I'm not going to use these on any more models, this is just for tutorial purposes, and then so you can see that the detail, like just from casting an original, it's just really, really nice, the, uh, the imposi, the imposi, <laughs> the composi mold, uh, Latex, I guess you could call it. I'm just going to call it latex just because, yeah, it's to call it a composite mold mold, which is really confusing. So, the composite mold rubber, we'll call it rubber. Yeah. So, the um, composite mold rubber, when it does set, it actually takes detail really nice. It doesn't miss anything. I mean, if you can make it out, if I can put my hands in here. Okay, let me try and get it in closer for you. I mean, you can actually see the, the, the nut on the top here. So if I get a cocktail stick and I'll point to it what I'm talking about. This nut right here, 
Now it actually picks that up and so using the bubble buster I mean if there was a bubble there it, you would have lost it so it actually picks up everything um, yeah, you can see the face really well so once I get the hang of this and using it properly mixing it all properly um, you know, I'm going to get some really nice casts out of um, that you can see there's a bit of imperfection down um, down on here I don't know what happened there but yeah so get in camera clean you monger so get it in there just along here there's a bit of an imperfection but I mean you can always cut that back with a hobby knife or you know so you can see the even the bolts okay yeah, don't worry about that big chunky bit there that's just snap that off that was part of the um top bit there okay, so have I showed you which one have I showed you yeah so there's a couple more Alright, so, yeah, so all I can say is go to the Composite Mold website, check it out, or if you if you are lucky enough to um, have a hobby shop or an art arts and crafts store nearby, near where you live, and you um, can get yourself some, I recommend doing it. It's It makes life so much easier. Um, it And really, realistically, it works out. You get nearly 35 litres of... Um, the composite mold uh, microwavable uh, rubber so by the time you use it like 35 times and the container is nearly like a litre so you're getting almost like 35 litres of that rubber so you're not wasting your money um, as long as you keep it clean and just a quick tip of what I've done yeah so all I can say is guys is go check out the composite mold website um, they on that website there. It's on www.composimold.com. Um, there is a st uh, store located now. There's a map on that website, and he they sell all around the world, guys. It's you're not just um. No, it's not just located in one country. They're going to give you all the towns where they sell it. Um, not all the stores that supply that supply it are listed on that list. So you might have to just email Sean and just ask him tell him where you live and and mention that that you've seen this review on this channel and I sent him uh, sent you guys over there to ask him a question to cuz like yeah this stuff is really really good and I I recommend it if I thought it was rubbish I wouldn't have this product on my channel um you know like I'm not going to I'm not going to promote a product that I believe that's, you know, it's just not worth sharing with you guys. And I do think it's worth sharing, which is why it's on here. So go check it out, um, composimold.com. And and just a quick tip before I go is these are from the molds. So this is the original tub. Um, this is from the pouring tub. So all these little shavings here, if I just tilt the camera back up. Okay, so all these shavings here is what's pulled off the pouring container. Okay, what I poured into the actual container they use for the mold. <coughs> Excuse me, I think it's getting a bit of cold here. So that was that won't get contaminated because there was no um, uh, mold release or anything like that on there. So it was quite safe to throw back in there without contaminating the rest. The next time you microwave it, um, the the composite mold uh, mold molding agent itself I cut them back up in small blocks and I do have the original molds here and this is what I end up saving I think I saved um, yeah so I kept these three so I broke them all down so all I've got so I want to use them again I can but what I'm thinking about doing is I'm just going to think about remelting remelting them down and yeah just trying again on something else or try recasting the other heads because I actually found the rest of them in my bits box so you can see I've chopped them down there and you can always store them in containers um, and then and what I've done to get to clean them off I've just used some water and very very mild like very mild soapy water not hot because you don't want to melt it just cold and I just cleaned off all the you know the old dirt and 
grease, anything that I had on my hands that might contaminate the next batch, and I just left them to dry. Um, now you definitely don't want to be using solvents or you know just anything that's really strong. Just a very mild soapy water, um, and just just wash it down, let it dry. You don't need to scrub it, and then just run it under fresh water, and just keep running it until um, you know it doesn't feel soapy anymore. Um, and yeah, and I just put it out to dry, and I put it back in this container. So I'm just going to keep using this container. If I need more, I'm going to add more. But you know, and what what I'm also thinking about doing, guys, is is getting myself some ice, uh, a um, a flexible ice cube tray, and that way I can pour tiny little molds, and I can just pop pour single parts that way. Then so, and then what I've also done as well, before I go. If I do have any excess resin, um, I've just got some old fuel drums and got some jerry cans here that I've also got to clean up. Okay, so I've only just glued these together. I've still got to take back the mold lines and clean them up a bit more. And then these will be for, you know, when I have any leftover resin, I'll just be pouring it there, just making just jerry cans, just so I don't waste the resin, guys. So um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'm sorry it's a bit long, but yeah. <laughs> I do apologize. So big thanks to everyone out there for supporting this channel and go and support Composing Mold and say good day to Sean for us. And I'll catch you in the next video. See you guys. Bye bye.